Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? Well, here we are again doing another video. The world doing its thing like it always does. I'm shocked at how much stories just disappear. Important stories with important details just disappear. That the media, you know, only tells us what we want to hear. Or what they think we want to hear, or what they want us to hear. We have to go do our own research to find the truth. It's kind of insulting, actually, that for people to think that we're that stupid, that we can't go find the information ourselves. And I think they they, they, they bank on people being lazy, and just accepting whatever is being given to them. That's how the tribulation is going to be. We're seeing aspects of it now. If we're seeing that, then what does that tell us? This is why people need to be saved. They need to have salvation. And it's a free gift. It's a it's a free choice. It's, it's an easy choice. For some people, that's the hardest thing in the world to do. Our morning devotion is going to come out of Revelation 22, 17. Whoever will, let him take the water of life freely. And I find it funny that we're probably going to end up back in the book of Revelation in the Isaiah video today, because today is the last chapter of Isaiah, Isaiah 66. Revelation is in a very important book, and, and it also struck me how so, for so long, so many pastors, for as far back as I can remember, encouraged people to not read that book. You can't possibly understand that book. Oh, that book's all allegory. Oh, you can't take any of that as as important, you know, for salvation. Just focus on every, on the New Testament. Don't even read the Old Testament. You don't know history. Why would they do that? If God didn't want us to know it, he wouldn't have put it in here. So obviously, he did want us to know it. And obviously, it is very easy to understand if you use the rest of the Bible to prove it. The problem we have today is a lot of people use other sources to prove Revelation. Use the rest of the Bible. The rest of the Bible proves Revelation. Revelation quotes and supports the rest of the Bible. The full verse for more, this morning's devotion is Revelation twenty two seventeen, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. How interesting. And let him who hears say, Come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Notice it says in the Bride say, Come. Spirit and the Bride. Well, the Spirit's with the Bride, right? Is not the bride the people that are going out and spreading the gospel? Come, come get this free gift. Let's read this in context. One, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> Verse 12. And behold, I am coming quickly. This is Christ speaking. And my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into his city. Understand what those commandments are. What commandments? John tells you exactly in 1 John. And this is his commandment. Faith and love. But outside, verse 15, are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him who hears say, Come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone, this is John now, who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecies of this book. Or prophecy in this case. It's important to remember they intended everyone to read this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. A lot of people will say, it's just for the book of Revelation. Um, yeah, I think it's the whole Bible, though. Well, uh, why would I be so you know, arrogant to think I could add or take away from anything in the Bible? Verse 19, and if anyone takes away from the words of the books of this prophecy... God shall take away his part from the book of life. 
from the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. A lot of people, well, he's just making a suggestion. He's just, he's just making a point. If he said it, it means it can happen. I know people are scared of that. They're scared to think that there's a possibility that somebody could be so much an enemy that this would happen. But he said it. If he said it, it, it can happen. There's a reason why he said it. It wasn't just for an example. It wasn't just for shock factor or shock value. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God, notice it's not Christ, God shall take away his part from the book of life and from the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Immediately followed by verse 20, he who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming quickly. That's Jesus Christ testifying to these things. So we have a statement, but, and we also have a testifying and an agreement with it. So don't be scared of what the Bible says. Accept it and work within it. He who testifies to these things says, surely I'm coming quickly. Amen. Even so come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now let's jump back real quick. I want to make sure everybody understands verse 19. I'm not saying somebody can lose their salvation. But you can have your name written in the book of life and not be saved. My name was written in the book of life from the beginning of all things. The Bible says these names, all everybody's name was put in there from the beginning of all things. If along the path to salvation, I decided to side with Satan and do evil in the sight of God and turn and go the other direction, this is what can happen to me. Before I even enter into the sheepfold, this is what can happen to me. Now, whenever we go into the book of Hebrews, there's a statement, similar statement made in the book of Hebrews. And I ended up being on the receiving end of a lot of hate because of the things I said about that. It had nothing to do with losing salvation. It has to do with not even coming to it. Uh, uh, someone deciding that they're going to do what they want to do. And end up going the other direction away from him and getting themselves in a situation. God is omnipotent. He's not going to give people a pass when it comes to those things. So if that's what it says, that's what he's going to do. Let me answer my neighbor real quick. Okay. Sorry about that. My neighbor has a massive tree limb that fell down. I'm going to use my tractor and pull it out of the way. So what we want to make sure is when we're reading the book of Revelation, or any book, and we see something that doesn't really quite strike us right, and a whole lot of people have an opinion about that, we want to go into the Bible and we want to read what the Bible says about that thing. And what I did for that part in Revelation 22 in Hebrews is I went to the Old Testament and looked at what went on in the Old Testament, that there were people who were even on the money. Everything was going good. They looked like they had it all figured out and turned them with the wrong direction. And what happened? Well, when God delivered all of Israel out of... Egypt to save them, killed a bunch of them in the wilderness. And the, the book of Hebrews also mentions that. So we have to be careful. Not be careful in that we might lose our salvation and make a mistake, because that's a big mistake that they, they keep trying to reiterate to people and putting that kind of fear in people's hearts. But that there are some people who, like Simon the Magician, who, who it looks good. He, the Bible says he believed and was baptized. And then we find out a few minutes later Actually, his heart was completely in the wrong place. There was never really any real salvation in him as far as a conversion would go because he didn't have the ability. Because he offered money for the Holy Spirit. And there are a lot of people that can find themselves in that boat and not know it. There's a lot of people today that, yeah, Jesus is real. Yeah, I believe in Jesus. And, and yet you watch what they do and they do the most horrible things in the name of God. How can that person have salvation? They can't. These are the people that fall into this category of what these things are talking about. So you got to use discernment when you read those things. They're not meant to instill fear in you to make you believe you can lose something that you didn't achieve and you don't maintain. He does. 
but it's to keep everybody in check and remind everybody there are people out there who are, are going to fall into this category. Jesus says there are some who are going to enter heaven like one escaping the flames. There's We're supposed to save some with compassion, save some with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment to follow by the flesh. There are some who are going to suffer great loss on that day of redemption, the day of the Bema Seat Judgment, but they shall be saved. So, so it, Some people are going to have a rough time, but Notice that nobody loses anything, except there are some who will never even achieve it in the first place. And it very well could be their name was written in the book and they decided to do something different. I don't know. that. That's a subject for a different story. We have to make sure we're clear on what these things are referring to. And we do that by testing them throughout the rest of the Bible to find out what God has to say about those things. And then you'll understand. Because these aren't random comments. These are there for a reason. Now let's get into what the core of the devotion is for because we got off subject <clears throat> whoever will let him take the water of life freely whoever anybody notice he, it doesn't differentiate between those whose name is in the book of life and those whose name isn't whoever whoever will let him take the water of life freely if for every single person jesus says take freely he wants no payment or preparation. He seeks no recommendation from our, vict our virtuous emotions. If you have no good feelings, if you be but willing, notice, I've told you guys this before, he's looking for people who are willing. He doesn't care about anything else, but are you willing? If you be but willing, you are invited, therefore come. You have no belief and no repentance. Come to him, and he will give them to you. In, in my opinion, the very act of turning to the Lord is your is your opening repentance. Come just as you are and take freely, without money, without price. He gives himself to needy ones. The drinking fountains at the corners of our streets are valuable in, uh, institutions. And we can hardly imagine anyone, and that's an old thing from way back when there used to be water fountains everywhere. They don't do that anymore. And we can hardly imagine anyone so foolish as to feel for his purse when he stands before one of them and to cry I cannot drink because I have not five pounds in my pocket back in the old days I know a lot of people listening might not realize this back in the old days there were water fountains everywhere and you could walk up and get a drink and yeah, they, they pretty much obliterated all those I cannot drink because I have not five pounds in my pocket however poor the man is there is a fountain, and just as he is, he may drink of it. Thirsty passengers, as they go by, whether they are dressed in Faustian or in broadcloth, that's fancy, rich, or poor and dirty, do not look for any warrant for drinking. Its being there is their warrant for taking its water freely. The liberality of some good friends has put the refreshing crystal there, and we take it and ask no questions. Perhaps the only persons who need go thirsty through the street where there is a drinking fountain are the fine ladies and gentlemen who are in their carriages. They are very thirsty, but cannot think of being so vulgar as to drink, as to get out to drink. It would demean them. They think to drink at a common drinking fountain, so they ride by with parched lips. Oh, how many there are who are rich in their own good works and cannot therefore come to Christ. Back in the old days, if you were rich, you didn't drink out of a water fountain. That's for poor people. That's for common people. But you couldn't carry anything in the carriage because if you brought something in the carriage, it would just splash out all over the floor and everybody would get their clothes wet and their shoes wet. There wouldn't be anything left. Today, and I remember in my past, you know, whenever there were fountains, even at the malls and that, I caught mono at a mall because of a drinking fountain. Got almost to the, well, the doctor, I guess his better judgment, sent me home instead of sending me to the hospital because my organs were swelled up pretty bad. The rich kids, the fancy ones, they all had water bottles. Everybody could afford bottled water. Us poor kids couldn't afford that, so we drank out of the fountains. Rich kids, kids with money, their parents had money, they'd, they'd come in with a soda cup. 
drinking an icy or something like that. Us poor kids. Didn't get into that stuff. That's what he's talking about here. They were too fancy to drink out of water fountains. I drank out of a faucet and a sink. It didn't matter to me. Water's water. If it's free, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to take it. Oh, how many there are who are rich in their own good works and cannot therefore come to Christ. I will not be saved, they say, in the same way as the harlot or the swearer. What? I will not be saved, they say, in the same way as the harlot or the swearer. What? Go to heaven in the same way as a chimney sweep? Is there no pathway to glory but the path which leads the thief there? I will not be saved that way. Such proud boasters must remain without the living water. But whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Christ was the lowliest of the low. The path he forged to heaven is the path every single person must take on. And the beginning of that path is really rough. The middle of that path is pretty rough. But that path is the only way to get there. And there are people in this world that will go out of their way to avoid taking the path Christ struck. They will find any other way possible. What does the Bible say? They're going to try to climb over through some other way? Not happening. Because if you try to climb over the fence, you just get knocked out. If you try to sneak in, what does it say? The parable. Wedding, the wedding reception. Hey, friend, how are you here without a wedding garment? Oh, well, I uh, uh, bind him hand and foot, toss him into outer darkness. You can't sneak in. It's not going to happen. You can't come in some other way. Everyone must come to Christ and partake of the water of life. It is freely given. Freely it shall be received. And upon doing so, the path is made clear before them. It's not a path of repentance, though it's paved with the bricks of repentance. It's not a path of works, yet it's fenced along the sides with good works. It is a path of faith. And not a faith that's built off of ours. It's a faith, a path of faith he laid. It is by his faith we enter heaven, not ours. He, in fact, is the one who gives us the faith. I cannot have faith unless he gives me faith. I don't have the ability. That's why I need to be saved. I can't possibly establish the kind of faith needed to enter heaven unless Christ puts that within me. This path is the path of submission. It's the path of realizing your depravity and your inability and looking to him and notice his ability. And that you must lean on his ability, his providence, his works, everything he's done in order for you to walk that path. That's the only way to step through onto it. And like I said in the beginning, it's rough because it's hard to see sometimes through the world, through all the stuff that's going on. And you get about midway and it gets clearer, but there's a lot of roadblocks, stumbling stones. When you get out near the end, it's pretty clear. And if anything does get in your way, you just bull it over and keep on going. Because you can see the light at the end. You see him at the end. You see the gate open for you at the end. For most people at that point, they're just about at a run. You're going to barge through there because they're tired of the world and everything that the world tried to do to keep them off the path. And that's what the world tries to do is get us off this path, distract us to go different directions. It's so easy. Let us not wait one more moment before going to the Lord and asking, Lord, where is this water of life? It, it, even though I know I'm saved, it, if, if it's there, can I have more? Can I partake of more of it? 
can you help our prayer today is going to ask them about these things can you help clarify my understanding on these things so that i can see things for what they are and move forward <coughs> into you with no doubt father we come before you this morning in the name of jesus christ to give you praise honor and glory to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name father thank you for this word and this devotion Thank you for the water of life freely provided for us. And that the invitation always stands to any and everyone. Come take of this water of life freely. But I ask something, Father. Though we have access to the fountain freely, I pray that when we partake, it will cause us to look to you. It will cause our eyes to open, our hearts to open, cause us to receive the wonderful gift of salvation that you offer. And to receive it so much that we not we don't look at ourselves anymore. We don't look to ourselves or anything anymore. We look to you always. We look to your word always. That it changes us so drastically that we can't help but walk the path towards heaven. The narrow path, the narrow gate. We can't help but follow this word and what it says. Because many, it seems, take the water of life freely, but then they just sit around the pool and never move. Like the man that was healed. Oh, I'm crippled. I can't do anything. I'm waiting for the angel to come and somebody to drag me into the pool. I can't even drag myself down there to the edge to get in. A lot of people don't understand why that story is in the Bible. That's why. This man waiting by the pool, waiting by the waters of life. The angel would stir them and somebody would get in and get healed. Never thinking for a moment he can drag himself there. Why wait by the pool and instead why not look for the one who made the pool? I, I noticed in that story Jesus only went to one person around the pool. No one else. Why no one else? Maybe that was the one who actually had faith. He took over the water but he actually had faith, actually was willing. And so our Lord saved him. How many people come to the fountain of the water of life, and but they stay around the fountain, they don't go anywhere. They don't go and look and see, hey, look, there's a path. Let's go see where that goes and follow it. Father, make us, after receiving this water of life, Walk on the path. To not wait around the pool. If we find some waiting around the pool, bid them, come. Hey, come on. Come on, come on. We're all going this way, man. Nah, I'm going to stay here. Look, you don't want to stay here. We need to go. But this is where the water is. There's more water where we're going. There's bread, too. There's Jesus. So, after we take this water, Lord, make us to walk the path. To give you glory. To walk in faith. To commune with the Holy Spirit. To read and learn about you from your word. To learn about ourselves. And along this journey to discover the most incredible things like you've done with me on my journey. And so many others. Father, make us to glorify you. In this and in everything else. To give thanks to you. To praise you. To worship you. To get saved. And to be confident and bold and stand up. When people come and they have their little arguments and their little discussions, shut all that down. No, that's not what you should be asking. Here's what you should be asking. Did you take the water of life freely? Yes. That's Jesus Christ. Okay. What happened after that? Are you still at the fountain or are you walking the path? Father, make us to walk the path. Make us to come to you on that narrow path, through that narrow gate, which is Jesus Christ. And which is this word. 
so that we may all stand before you around your throne giving you glory. I personally very much look forward to that day. If I had the choice, I'd leave this life in an instant. You know I spent almost eight years praying every morning to take my life. I don't, I'm not, I'm, I don't want this anymore. But I know there's more important things that are outside of me that need to be dealt with. And that's why I'm here. That's what I'm doing here. So Father, make us to understand. The water of life is freely given. And it's made to sustain us as we travel the path. This word is also a fountain that we can carry with us, a, a cistern of that living water that carry with us and sustain us along that path. Until we come to heaven where the river of life starts. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. The water of life that is freely given, may we freely take it. In his name, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for daily prayer. A little different topic this morning, but nonetheless important. Because what I take from this is that it's not just about the fountain. The water, yes. But the idea is we take our little container with the water in it to sustain us as we walk the path. So we'll leave that water of life, that fountain... And go along the path to Christ. Funny enough, it takes you to the headwaters of the fountain. Where God is. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And I love it. Alright, thank you guys for watching. I love you all. I bless you all in Jesus' name. Make sure you watch Isaiah 66. It's going to be good. I'll see you guys in the next video.